Hey everybody, it's the 30th, we're more than halfway through the year, how's that feel Addison? That feels a little terrible, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, it's a little crazy, Josh, how you doing, now that we're halfway through the year? More than halfway, no? Yeah. 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 Yep. You know, so how are you feeling? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Okay, cool. I think... First of all, we have a fantastic program lined up for you today. It's going to be amazing. Uh, pedal board cam real quick. We have a lot of new stuff. We're going to talk about it. But first, <clears throat> today feels kind of normal, right? It's just like a grind mm -hmm. a little bit. Yep. And I think a lot of the viewers, indeed, you're just grinding it out. You're doing your thing. And I just want to be the first to say, not every day is exciting. Right? So what I did... Because we need to be excited about today. Something's got to be interesting. I pulled up. It's a thing I like to do sometimes. Today in history. Oh. Okay. I, I wasn't expecting that. Well, nobody was. Right. You didn't I tell literally us. decided a second ago. Got it. So today's normal, and you're living your normal life, but once upon a time today, these things happened. Let's hear them. Montezuma II is murdered as a Spanish conquistador flees the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan during the night. <laughs> what year was that? That was 1520. Got so it. So that's old school. Okay. Tenochtitlan. Do I look like I can pronounce anything? <laughs> no. 1857, Charles Dickens reads A Christmas Carol at St. Martin's Hall in London. That's special. Was Wait, come who? On. Charles Dickens. Kidding. If You could say that right. If how baller would it be to be like, yeah, I saw him read that. Was okay. he Charles Dickens back in the day? Is my question. He was always Charles Dickens. Well, that's like okay. Aww. That's like saying was Santa Claus always Santa Claus? Okay. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean. In 1859, Jean Francois Graveletta. I don't know. I'm not gonna try. A I tried. AKA Emile Blonde. His other name is impossible. A French daredevil becomes the first man to walk across Niagara Falls on a tightrope. Have y'all been to Niagara Falls? Nope. No. It's horrifying. When? What year is this? I, standing, this is 1859. Wow. He walks across it on a tightrope. I stood there and like peed on myself a little just looking at it. It's so insane. Like, Are you sure it wasn't the like splash it was from all the it. water? Okay. I didn't have a rain jacket on, right. so I don't, I'm not sure. Got it. 19 oh, is this good? This is great. Cause I'm actually need, really interested. We need to know yeah. that today wasn't always a grind. Right. Okay. Absolutely. 1908, a mysterious explosion. Possibly the res I love this. Possibly, this is it 1908? Right. Possibly the result of a meteorite levels thousands of trees in Siberia with a force approaching 20 megatons. Yo. Yep. I see something in your eyes. <laughs> yeah. So, I've read about this incident a few times, um, and the way that the like local villagers talk about it is really fascinating. Um, possibly a meteorite, or... possibly Russian military experimentation, possibly. There's a lot of possibilities. Yeah, I'm gonna fly through these last ones. This this day, this is not a normal day. No day is a normal day. No way. Today's a grind, but it wasn't always a grind. Adolf Hitler in 1934 purges his own party in the Night of the Long Knives. What kind of, that's a, that's a what? title to remember. 1936, Gone with the Wind is published. Okay. 1948, they invent and demonstrate. They demonstrate the transistor for the first time. <gasps> what are the chances of that? That's why today's special. That's why today. Because none of this would happen. Wow. Whoa. Man, I'm telling 38, you 1938? 48. 48. 48. Okay. Wow. William Shockley, which Bob Meyer, who we interviewed recently, thanks yeah. to our patrons, knew him. Dang. And they actually had patent things. Anyway. Whoa. Psycho, Alfred Hitchcock, opened today in 1960. Wow. And the last one, 1971, three Soviet cosmonauts died when their spacecraft depressurized during reentry. So today wasn't always not interesting. So we're going to do our part here. Yep. And we're going to show these pedals and make today interesting. New and notable pedals on June 30th. Yeah, new and notable. Let's uh with that said, let's give away some Hercules stuff. Uh you have it on you? 
Do I ever? Uh, we're gonna do that. Ernie Ball trivia time, as always. Uh, yeah, let's go for it. Let's do it. All right. First two people to get the answer right to our trivia question in the comments. Joshua's gonna tag you. We'll give you the answer in a little bit. Can you guys guess where the trivia is coming from? No idea. We've never done this before. <clears throat> Here's the question. In the Disney movie Hercules, what actor played the voice? Did you say Disney? <laughs> of Phil. The character Phil. Yes, I did say Disney. In the Disney movie Hercules, what actor played the voice of Phil? Also known as, well, his real name is Philoctetes. Is that right, Joshua? Yeah, that's good. Awesome. That's good. Thank you. I got it right. I was I was a little scared to say that name. Especially around Joshua. That's right. He's a he's a linguist. Right. Correct. Yeah. Philologist. Whatever. Throw your answer in the comments. All right. What we're going to do, uh, we're going to give those away. First, let's go down to the board. I'm going to do this a little differently. Um, I'm going to walk through and just show you each pedal and explain them briefly. That way, when we go to jams, I can more freely use stuff. I love it. I've noticed that I kind of get, I try to demo like a pedal and then I want to turn another one on yeah. and then... I'm very, like, my brain goes into type A, and I'm scared to play another pedal because I feel like it'll offend people, which is the dumbest thing ever. We're improving. We're That's improving. We're, we're trying to work better. on ourselves. This guy, the Triple Graph, uh, this is a Jack White collab. He's a, a struggling, unknown indie artist, Jack White. Um, I think his record label that he's trying to start is called Third Man. And oh. he did this with a really cool company, some of the most solid guys I know, Copper Sound. Uh, they had a little Nam thing going where they bought pizza and had like a Ninja Turtles theme. It was impressive. Neat. So this is them. This is also them. So this is a treble booster called the Broadway. Um, I actually wonder what the tr OC44 transistors. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, this is cool. It's called the Broadway. It's a Telecaster. Does anyone in our audience in the comments connect that? Broadway is the name treble booster and a telecaster look anybody in the comments addison do you know the connection is it the connection you said earlier because if it's not the, it's not the nashville broadway what yeah, it's nashville. is it okay yeah. cool my my first thing goes to broadcaster broadway broadcast but that's oh, not you know it could be it could I don't be know. both it could who it knows could totally be both who knows so we have those this triple graph um let me let's do this let's actually play these did you break I, your guitar? Am I muted? Uh, something on? Is your is your amp uh, off standby? You know, life's really hard. Let me look. No. No. Okay, I'll come help. What's happening? Everyone this is, the, is saying this is broadcaster. The, this is the first oh, technical difficulty we've ever had on the show. That's not true. Oh. Nope. Total meltdown. Hey, this is what's good. So the front's working. This just shows the audience this happens to everyone. It does. It's never happened to me. Oh, my switch. Okay. My, my switch was in the middle position. Like perfectly caught in between nothing. All right. Travel booster. So this guy, it's a great idea because the three-way, it's their input cap, I believe, on the treble booster. So here's like your traditional. It's a great idea. Add a little slap. So that's amazing. I will set that back to full treble boost. I'll try to use it on a grinding solo where we don't have a bass player so that everything completely drops out and it's just drums and like a bright guitar because that'll be fun. I can't wait for that. Because Nick's still gone. Apparently having a kid means you need to spend time with the young baby or something. Lame. I don't know. Whatever. Mm. Uh, let's look. Dogman Devices. So this is a really cool fuzz pedal called the Fire Fuzz. Mm. Um, basically, 
It gets real gated, which is real nice. This is a small one-man operation. He's making really cool stuff. It's located in Ohio. In Ohio. Yep. This is like an etching process, I believe, on the case. Mm -hmm. If you had to take a stab at what kind of a fuzz this is, any, any idea? No clue? I've never opened it. So I would start. It's tricky. I always, like with a with a three-knob tone control fuzz, I always think Big Muff got to be. This is not that. I don't know. It's a very misbiased in a very perfect way. He tuned this in a way that's really cool. I really love it. So that'll be fun to jam on. Nice. We have two new TC pedals. Uh, good old TC has shrunken some things down. You have the Zeus and the Magnus. Magus. 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 The Zeus is a clone. Um, replica, variant, clone, whatever you want to call it. So my clone setting is always this pointed here. Trouble straight up. Volume. Sounds right. It has a fat toggle, which is... Oh, the fat was on. Oh, so much better without the fat on, in my opinion. Agreed. Yep. Then the magus. What does that word mean? Anybody want to look that up? Magus? Magician. Hey. Does it? Yeah. I just love that you knew that. Same. It's my job. Gain, filter, volume. This is a rat. Nailed it. It's a rat. <laughs> the copy refers to well, yeah. the famous chip. The coveted tone of the infamous LM308 op yep. amp in your hands. There's no way they're using that op amp. It that, doesn't exist. That was a question that the I had. The other Probably thing not. is, let's have a rat talk. Let's do it. That's exciting. I don't think the LM308 is necessary. I don't think it has much to do with the rat tone people think they want. Do you hear a difference? That's my question. No? Is it there like is there like this much of a difference? It's I'm what I'm about to say is very offensive. I'm here for it. It is my strong opinion. Let's go. I can put one of ten op amps in a rat circuit, hand it to you. You could shoot it out yeah. literally right here. We have a rat section. Yep. You'd never know the difference because it's not the op amp. And I know wow. that people hate that. There's people mad. People right now have unsubscribed. Yep. Because people want to believe that that off amp is why the rat sounds like it sounds. We hear what we want to hear. We hear what we want to hear. Yep. We attach stuff to what we've been told. The yep. LM308 has what's called a really slow slew rate. So that the slew rate is the operational speed of an amplifier. It just, it's just not what's magical about the rat. So that's my opinion. I love that. I just yeah. learned something. I want to do more yep. about the rat because we should. I'm not saying the 308 is not amazing. Right, that right, when right. you buy a vintage one, there's not a feeling to yeah. it. It's not the op amp. Sure. Don't get hung up on the op amp. Yeah. It's the tube screamer thing. Yeah. Well, and I think too, you could probably pull those off the wall, and like part tolerances are going to be different, or something like this yeah. that like will maybe maybe it'll affect something. Well, we've more been than... working on a secret project that involves a possible. I don't know. I'm not going to say too much. Oh, oh. So I have close to 35 rats, all variations, versions, multiples. Yep. And they all, like, yeah, you can pick up the same year. The op amp's not the thing. Anyway, it's just funny yeah. that even TC in their copy is mm -hmm. because it's so important to people. They felt yeah. the need to put it in there. Yeah. But they did say the tone of, which I think is funny. Hmm. Well, and that is like ultimately yeah. everything's in that ballpark, right? Yeah. Every even uh, things that are just a little bit differently yep. di are different are all going to be. It's all in that ballpark. Yeah. So here it is. It sounds amazing. And for fifty nine bucks, you get Fat Rat Classic and Turbo. So your Turbo should be LED clipping. Classic will be one in four one four eight equivalent. 
and fat. What's interesting with fat is I guess I'm taking total guesses. They have some type of relay switch in here where fat actually might not affect clipping. It's probably the input capacitor instead of the diode. TC has the tech and knowledge to do that kind of switching. So there's that. Can I can I shameless plug real quick? You can do whatever you want. Yes. So here it comes. That is an amazing rat. Our three series distortion, if you haven't played it and you want an affordable, another affordable option, yeah, is so good. It's a rat, but yeah. it's it's amazing. Forty one dollars more expensive, right? Which might break the bank for it someone. Could. So it buy could. this if you can't afford the three series. Yep. Buy the Magus. There's they're in all different. It's a magician levels. Tone. It's magical. Did I do that right? Magical tone? Okay. The Excess by Old Blood Noise Endeavors, $199. It's everything you need for your next ripping session in 1985 and beyond. That's what the copy says. So you have chorus slapback delay in a parallel signal path. I think this is a play on the Ibanez session, man. Parallel, not series. Yeah. I don't think it is, but the, the concept is there. Cool. So I have it in delay. That's cool. And you can put distortion in this, which is... If I go mod, or, or so go to, that's the chorus. So this foot switches between delay. That's your fastest delay time. And note, I do not have a drive on. This is inside this pedal. Then your longest delay time. Then you have modulation. Oh, do you hear the little... Yep. So there's that. Slow that down. Turn the feedback. That's Flange City. This is the only song that was a hit that has the word placenta in it. And if you know what I'm talking about, just drop it in the comments. Who, what song is this and by what band? So that's a cool pedal. And then Parallel. I'm adding more distortion. And then there's a tone. Whoa, that's amazing. Yo. Turn it down. So that's a super fun pedal. I love that. Parallel series. NASCAR Delay by JoYo. I did an episode, JoYo's Greatest Budget Line. It's been highly viewed. This is a true Bucket Brigade delay. I'm going to assume it's a cool audio 3205 chipset, which is nice. We use it in the Cub. Uh, Behringer makes all those. So there's humor in that. Um <laughs> This is as fast as you get. Now, NASCAR, this this is, a, here's a question for us three yep. and in the comments. Why would a company building these in Asia where NASCAR does not exist? By the way, what does NASCAR mean, number one? To me, it means. I have no idea. It means Sunday you go to the track, you got a case of beer, sunscreen, and the tires are rumbling around you, right? Yep. Campers, yep. Talladega. I'm from Alabama. So Why would know. they name a delay NASCAR? Any thoughts? Uh, well, you know, I was thinking about this, yeah. and I feel like the reason why a Chinese pedal company would name a... Never mind. Never mind. I don't know. I think it's because it only does fast times. Interesting. Fast times. Okay. I was thinking maybe they're trying to appeal to 
people like yourself from the South that like NASCAR? Yes. Yeah, so a Chinese company is marketing a bucket brigade towards people from the South. It's a wonderful marketing plan. <laughs> do you think China thinks <laughs> every know. American likes NASCAR? Maybe they do. Yo. Maybe they think all of America is like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm going to go down to the NASCAR course, get myself a beer. You can have that song. People out are there. here for this right now. So I think it's because of the fast speed. Got Anybody it. in the comments, let us know what you think. Yep. Moving on. Flama or Flama? Mm, what we do we still, got here? We still didn't decide. Flama or Flama? Flama. Flama. I think it's Flama. This line is blowing my mind. Yep. I'm about to film an episode on the whole line, and they don't pay me to do that. Let me clarify. I uh, bought a bunch of them on Amazon from Jeff Bezos himself. He boxed them. It's kind of amazing. With your own money. Yeah. Uh, this delay is so good. It's like 79-ish. Am I right on that? Yep. $79. Nailed it. Might be $76. I can't even get <laughs> breakfast for $79. Are you, well, you have a big family, so there's, there's yeah, a no. problem. Listen to that. That is a nice Memory Man sound. Mm. I actually don't know. Uh, the modes are on there. Six modes? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're on the, the sheet. Inside? No, no, no. Sorry, on the on the paper. I oh, it. you've see. Addison tried to prep me with all this stuff because there's so many things to remember. Oh yeah, I set you up for success. So mode two is liquid. Step phaser effect. That is a beautiful delay. That's really cool. So s mode three. Let's go through the modes. I hope people are okay with it. We're gonna jam later. We don't have a bass player. We're trying to show you pedals that might interest you. Yep. If you have questions, ask them in the comments. Rainbow. Ah, oh, is this some kind of take on if the rainbow machine, you think? Hey. Pitch, shutter, unique delay. It's like a trim well, yeah. pitch thing. That's beautiful. That's pretty cool. And you have a tweak one and a tweak two, so. Come on. I like that. Just do a drum groove. I'm going to turn my mic Dude. off. We can do what we want. We create our own destinies. That's cool. So now this next mode, Galaxy, delay with a post slow gear. Did I mention this is $79? Are you telling me that for $79, I can get all of that? I would put this on a board. Package. Yeah. It's really cool. Let's go. Here's what I like. I don't know anything about this company. I saw them, and they, they looked like they were just worth trying out. Uh, like if you watch 60 cycle hum ryan he does all these affordable boards this was very much like i'm sure he's played these probably five videos for me it was like a lot of budget things don't catch my eye these looked really nice and the price was decent I just bought a bunch they did send me uh three minis they just gave me those i bought a couple of those as well but like the sounds are not basic they have like creative sounds in these you just don't really see that in budget pedals, in my experience. When there's nothing wrong with it. Usually a budget delay is going to be like, this does tape. I think the cool thing you just said is like, there's creative sounds in it. Like I hear that on, like as a part on a record, which is Listen to that. cool. So this next mode, mode five is going to be low bit.
again. This is incredible. Or maybe this is Modverse. Yeah, this plays back in inverted order, so. Yeah. Then you have low bit. <laughs> again, though. Very cool. That's super cool. And then there's a looper, which I don't care about. So I just have to point out, though, yeah. 80 second looper uh, has delay built in and an input output level control. In addition to all the delay types, like, I, can you buy another looper that cheap? I don't know that you can. Like, with that yeah. much delay, that much time. And it's I don't know. stereo through in and out. It's again. crazy. I don't know what the processor is. So here's the tape delay. I'm going to, we've spent a lot of time on this, but I don't care. I really like this pedal. So here's the tape setting. I'm going to pick a sound and leave it. That is a really great tape sound. And the tweakability. So. Cool. Wow. And that's our show. The Flemma Delay. Uh, is that a Memory Man copy? That sound, I think, no. I think what they're doing on the mod verse, th but the problem is this sounds very Memory Man, but it says tape. I mean, there's similarities in like the badness of quality is why a Memory Man's beautiful and why a tape's beautiful. That's very. That seems a, very. It tape. has a Memory Man and tape. Yep. Yeah. It's just a good sounding delay. Yep. Again, it just sounds really original as well. This triple graph, this thing took 28 years to make. Yep, four years. You know the story pretty well. Yeah, somewhat. Yeah. Yeah, we originally connected with them. Um, so it is a collaboration with Jack White. I, who is he? Who? Jack White. Oh, uh, he's, I don't know, he's a guy. Yeah. Well, you said he was like an upcoming indie. He's like trying to break out. Yeah. Like get that's a cool, start. That's cool. So they made a pedal with this songwriter. Right. Okay. With a, yeah. A little artist, which speaks volumes about who. Yeah. They're really know, trying to is. help people. Right. Exactly. Okay. Which is very cool. So uh, it's entirely digital, which is cool. I'm excited. There's an octave up, I believe, on the right side. There's an octave down on the left side. The middle foot switch. Uh, oh, is an activation for like a loop and can also be like a kill stutter switch. So there is a send return effects loop. You can put your favorite effect in that. You can control it with that stutter switch. Um, and then I believe any of the three foot switches can be uh, either latching or just momentary uh, based on how you set them. So it's pretty sweet. And they say it's an amazing like zero latency digital tracking feature on the pedal. So. Yeah, he sent me a message. We're just hanging out. There's no pressure. None at all. Hey, There's a secret mode in this. Plus, secret it has an mode. effects loop. I don't have yeah. this hooked up, so you can like put things in the loop. But there's. Um, Do you want me to put some in the loop real quick? Nah, it's no. Fine. Okay. Um, there's a hidden function by hitting two keys at once, the kill switch and one of the octaves. You get a fully wet octave, so it removes the dry. So, let's show this. Now they had. Uh, a pedal, one of their first products, which is a cool pedal, it's just a, a kill switch. Now, this is very mechanical and beautiful. You're only seeing a top down. This is like really well crafted. There's the, nothing janky about the way no. this This feels like the government had it made and spent too much money. You know they're, what I mean? They're $399, but the way it feels is like, ah, oh, that's that's how it should feel for that. So, they, I guess it's called the Telegraph they had, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is a stutter. Yeah. So, right. obviously, I can't lift my foot up on the table. I'm, I'm not a gymnast. So that's a very useful effect. So if you take something like 
Let's take the dog man. You know, you're jamming on a riff. You got like. Josh, how about you play this? You want to play the button while I play a riff? Yeah. Or you mute me altogether. So there's that. And then what they've done here, you have a picture of a lock closed or open. Open means it's going to be momentary. That means it's permanently down. So if we go momentary, and let's just add, let's add the magus. Magus. <laughs> magus. And I'm going to do this. This is high octave. Notice the arrows go up. Wonderful. Now, if I latch it, octave down. So, we found our bass player. We don't even need a bass player. Nick, he's going to play drum. We don't even need you anymore. Let's let's play some stink rock. Here's a riff. So what I did there, that's your low and high, and then I slapped on the NASCAR delay. I like a world where how much is th a $400 pedal right. can jam with the NASCAR delay. Yep. Absolutely. I almost took my shirt off on that one. <laughs> I, same. If I wasn't playing, my shirt would be off. Hey, speaking of your shirt. Maybe we should invent rock shirt. Rockshirt.com. Do an rock ambush. It's shirts you can take off while you play guitar. <laughs> Somebody buy that right now. Hey, what is your safety third? Safety third? It's what is thing. first and second? Just have to think about it. Just Google it. Let's look it up. Really? Okay. Yeah. Dang. What's more important than safety? Hey. There's two things. Throw it in the comments if you know. <laughs> uh, all right. Should we uh, announce the winner? Yes. Oh, we never did that. <laughs> yep. Hey, also for this winner, we have these really cool rombo picks. We're going to give away a bunch of these to this winner as well. So check these out. Rombo Crisp, Rombo Classic, Rombo Waves. These are, again, people send us stuff, so we want to pass along. We're not, again, we're not making anything here. Nope. We don't need pick money. Honestly, okay? it's really fun to talk about other companies you know, and give stuff just, away. I keep disclaiming because people are like, well, they're getting, uh, we're not getting rich off. We're just heck giving no. these away. All right. No way. It's cool. I think I love their packaging. They're from Germany. They're very nice. I talk Super to them a lot nice. on email. Not everybody's nice. That's right? true. Amen. So if somebody's nice, I'm going to give your stuff away for you. Yes. Uh, I like them. There's just all kinds of textures. I tell you, I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to go absolutely nuts. What I'm going to. What are you going to do? I'm going to give the winner of this Hercules thing yep. every one of these. Wait, can we split them up because there's two Hercules yeah, winners? Yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> but you're going to get a lot of stuff. So yeah, you are. Yeah, and then here's the deal. If you win it, you got to just give your friends some, be kind, pass it along, because that's what we're doing. Who's that winner? 
Z. Okay. The winners. Winners of the Hercules question. In the Disney movie Hercules, what actor played the voice of Philoctetes, better known as Phil? The answer is, do you know? I've seen that movie. It's and Danny I... DeVito. <laughs> so, if your was name he is... The penguin? <laughs> Yes, he he's he the was. creepiest penguin in what? Oh yes, he is the Michael Batman. Keaton. Michael <gasps> Keaton Batman. Oh he was also in Twins. Yo, he was in Twins. Danny DeVito, Batman Returns. He was in Batman Returns. What is, what's a, the show he's in? The a Penguin. Penguin. <laughs> <laughs> so if your name is Lewis Charles, I'm not going to try your last name. I'm very sorry. Even after I made fun of you, it's fine. Penguin. If your name is Lewis Charles, please email us at vlog at jhspedals.com. Here's your three, here's your three uh, pick sets. And if your name ain't Lewis Charles. Go to R-O-M-B-O, type in Rombo Picks. Go check them out on Google's. Google's Alta Vista Hotbot. Ask Jeeves. Here you go. Um, so your sec- our second winner, I actually, you ready? I didn't realize we were doing two. It's okay. You only picked one. It's fine. I did pick a second one just now. <gasps> yeah. But it's the very last person hey, that's to fine. have said Danny DeVito. Love it. Uh, right. And their name is T. Just the letter. Just the letter T? T. Oh. So kind of like Prince was a symbol. Okay. They're a letter. So if you're, if you are Lewis Charles or T, email me, vlog at jhspedals.com. Yeah. Tell I me like, I like that. You and here's your picks. I'm going to keep those two sheets We'll pick your picks. Yeah, there's your picks. All right. Next up, we have two more pedals on the board, and we'll just do some jams. We have Ernie Ball trivia time coming up after I go through this brand, and you get a box of strings of your choice. And something a little special today. And some some little hot sauce on that. And that's because Ernie Ball's kind. It's good to give stuff away and be nice. Isn't it? You know? Okay. Man. Lollygagger. Let's talk about Lollygagger. Which, by the way, when I read the name, I thought, wow, that's a great name. I love that's that That's an name. awesome name. So we have these two here. The Cherry Box. These these are wooden, like as wood as wood gets. Very well crafted. They're as beautiful as a nice piece of furniture. Yep. They are. It's like you see people do wood pedals, and it's like, eh. This is, uh I'm going to guess. Talk the, about it. The cherry box is made out of cherry. I hope to God. And I think the other one's made out of maple. I know for sure the other one's made out of maple because I read it, but the cherry box has got to be made out of cherry. Surely it is. It says the beauty of the wood enclosure okay. with the vibrant color of cherries that come only from northern Michigan. Uh, okay, so that doesn't give us anything. I don't know what that means. Did I get it right on the other one? Is it maple, though? Are they from Michigan? He's such a nice guy. We've talked on Instagram quite a bit. Yeah, he sent these in. This I've had this a while, and I keep wanting to do an episode called Modern Fuzzes or like some take on people think of fuzz like fuzz face or tone bender, but there's so many builders doing really fun, weird things. So this is kind of like Beauty and the Beast here. These two fuzz. This Dang. is like Beauty and this is Beast. Okay. So let me demonstrate. Yep. What does foobar mean? Do you know? Have you seen the movie Saving Private Ryan? Yeah, like... I believe it's a military term of some kind. Two that they, years ago. That was created in World War II. Do you know, Joshua? No. It's a it's a, it's a, a slang curse word. It okay. means something. I don't. I actually don't know the meaning. I, I just either. know that much about it. We're but. here to learn. What's the, what's the guitar-looking pedal again? The Broadway. The Broadway. Copper sound. Guitar-looking? That, what's that? Don't ever look- make fun of me saying penguin. What's that guitar looking? Because I said looking. <laughs> if I want to say penguin, play the guitar. Hey, you guys made fun of me earlier for a word I said. We did. Yep, that's I, fine. Everyone's got one. Oh, that's that's easy. Loud. That's a loud boy, right? I there. know what foobar mm. means, but I can't say it on live. Right. TV. Okay. So my, it's a yeah. Let's just let it be then. Yep. That's probably enough to know that it's. Uh, 
All right, it cleans up really cool. I'm just rolling my volume back. Back up. Then we have a tone control, I believe. Tart control. Slam the foo bar switch down. <laughs> so this is like an oscillating. Okay, that kind of sounds like chaos and war a little bit. Red alert. Red alert. Red alert. They have arrived. This is not a test. This thing's wild. I love it. More creative machines. Yeah, I'm like... I like this and the concept. I need to do this episode where it's like you don't have to have a normal mm. fuzz yeah. for Led Zeppelin yep. riffs. You can have fuzz that is really creative. This is super cool. Awesome. Great price at two nineteen. I don't know how he's making any money. Yep. You might want to buy some before he needs to raise the price. Yep. That's cheap. But that enclosure, and I know he's sitting there wiring them. Probably a one man operation. I just have That's to correct. That's a killer price. I have to correct myself. Yeah. I don't know what they're made out of. They're not. They're probably not cherry and maple. I thought they were, but they're not. They're made out of something. They are. And well, that, it's wood. We know that much. And that matters. Even if it it's does. laminate, it's beautiful. It's true. And then we have this. This is the habanero. Now, I'm not a food scientist, but I know that's a pepper, right? Indeed. <laughs> It enhances the natural gold tone of the figured hard maple wood, such as bird's eye, flame tiger, or quilted. The flame comes through like a hot pepper. Does anyone know how to say the name that's on? Canagalia. He see and see me. This guy's doing amazing stuff. Yeah. I. He here's the deal. Some people make pedals like me, and then some people play chess with pedals. Hey. He's playing chess. What an analogy. That's a beautiful analogy. It is. There's these some are, sophistication. These are sophisticated. There we go. And you know, let's stare at them. Everybody stare at them. These are really beautiful. Attention to detail. The circuits are so cool. And a brand that's on point. Like, I love seeing a smaller company. Sometimes people don't think about brand, but like, He's locked in this logo font typeface on both. The wood grain thing, the knobs are on point. It's just really well done. Good job. Here we go. That's spicy, you know what I'm saying? Habanero? Hey. Habanero. Thank you. So this is an over... I don't know what the topology is. It's not normal. Like, this is not a tube screamer. Um, it feels loose on the edges. It could be totally discrete transistor stages or something. It feels really nice. Like... Cleans up really well. like a perfect amount of low end which is cool
if you're out there making film scores, you better go buy that pedal right now. Yeah. That's real nice. I mean, all of them, but I know that was the... It, it's amazing. That was the lollygagger. Check out the lollygagger stuff for so sure. Good. Um, I, You smell that? It smells like Ernie Ball Trivia Time. Hey. Welcome to Ernie Ball Trivia Time, the time in our show where we give away a whole box of strings because, well, we don't give them away. We give them away, but then Ernie Ball really gives them we away. We give so. because they've been given. Come on. That's awesome. Ernie Ball, you guys are great. We love you guys. Thanks for uh, being a part of our show. Uh, here's the question for those that uh, would like to participate. Oh, and a little extra bit of goodies today. What? <laughs> so this is a 10-pack? Yep. Of their brand new... How many pedals can you chain together with 10 cables? 11. You did it. I did it's do it. It's a trick question. It is. Expect that at the Christmas party. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll know. Okay. Here's a little bit... Hold on. I'm going to... Well, it's not going to focus. doesn't matter. Maybe top-down camera real quick. We could show those... Uh, those little... There we go. You see those? They're white. And when they said that they were uh, making these, I was like, yo, that's on brand for us. So they sent us a bunch. We're going to get yeah. a bunch away. Uh, all right. So here's the question, if y'all are ready. What JHS and Ernie Ball artist produced Green Day's 2020 record, Father of All? Throw it in the comments if you know it. And if you're first, you're going to get something. We're doing record times on lives because we create our own destinies. And uh, I really like this record. It is low, double negative. Just check it out. Uh, if you know about it in the comments, let me know. It is alternative, shoegazy, different. Would I like it? I think you would. Oh, okay. You're, you're really hard with music. I am. Yeah. But if it's not the killers, it's always hard with you. But low, double negative. I like this record. Produced by BJ Burton. It's a sub pop record, um, which means something to like 12 of you. Check it out. Low, double negative. Um, while we're also looking at who that winner is, let's do a little Hot Topics. Hot Topics. All right, so here's the deal. We're going to take just a moment because the Hot Topic, I think, internally is uh the episode we dropped last week so there's there's some interest there's some interesting feelings that i deal with dropping certain like documentary style stuff because i know everybody wants to see pedal riffs and pedals but it's like super it's important to me the musicology aspect of guitar the stories and we're working really hard to put that stuff together in short digestible doses so this episode came from our Patreon private talks. We rebooted it and added a few, you know, pictures and made it a little more digestible. But it's essentially, it was a private talk where we flew into Memphis and I'd been reading this book called Escaping the Delta. I grew up in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. My wife is from Tupelo and the Delta is about an hour and a half from there. And I was just oblivious to this history as a kid. Uh, even loving music. So this book, Escaping the Delta, it was really great. I read it twice, and I just wanted to drive Highway 61. And so to me, it's this really interesting, mostly lost narrative to guitarists and people who love music. I love music. So when I say that, you need to understand, as a teenager, when I started buying CDs, I would, I would sit on my bed and memorize the cast list of a CD and like, Music means a lot to me. I think music in all, without being corny, music has always been my drug. People joke about we must always be smoking pot on here because we're so chill. Music has just always been my drug. I've never, I've never done drugs. I've never, music has been absolutely my obsession and what has pulled me through everything from being a teenager on. So these musical topics and stories are as important and probably more important to me than pedals. And so you're going to see more of this on the channel because I love it so much. Um, so this episode, it's basically how black America created rock and roll, right? It's a simple subject and it's, uh, it's an, 
inarguable subject historically, yet some of the comments are just so... Um, it's like people didn't quite watch the episode well. Now, the majority of comments are amazing. Like some of the response we've seen, it's so encouraging to know as we work towards documentaries and towards books I'm doing and certain things that people really love and connect with these stories. But I wanted to read a few uh, comments that feel misdirected or misunderstood towards what we're doing. That's the hot topic. We ready for this? So ready. Yeah. We can do this. Heck yeah. It can be fun. We can jam and make noise, and then we can get serious for like a, a split second because I think to teach history properly, it's small doses and it's in a commitment, like for me, the commitment form. And so I just want our audience to know like where I'm at and why would we air an episode like that instead of a best fuzz pedals, right? Yep. I think that's part of it. So uh, this comment, Sister Rosetta Tharp, just saying. That's all the comment says. So this is interesting. Um, a lot of times, we all know YouTube comment section is going to be the worst. Any YouTuber will tell you this. This is just one of those comments where it's like, understand that sometimes when we air an episode, not sometimes, every time it has to be a very digestible, pointed subject. Sister Rosetta Tharp is amazing. Um, I'm working on a book with my research assistant, Kelsey, and she's an entire chapter. So I know all about her. Like, I probably know more than you who wrote this. But I didn't want to talk about Sister Rosetta because she's not related to Highway 61. She's not related to Robert Johnson's linear timeline to where British rock came along. Like, just understand that take an episode for what it is, not for what it's not. Any thoughts on that? No? <laughs> I think there's just because you moderate, you're yeah. in the, you're in the comments a lot. I think a big thing on this issue or this topic, this hot topic, is um, understanding a narrative. And like right. when we're when you're getting into the nitty gritties of history, you can only talk about certain narratives like one at a time if you're going to hit a narrative really narrowly, right? Which you already said in a way that's understandable, digestible in half an hour yeah we're not we don't have a 10 million dollar budget in ken burns level help even like, if we did though it still may have, not exactly so a lot of people don't know addison you worked on documentaries I did. like yeah these have been on espn and so forth it's like talk about it from your perspective of yeah. trying to help people digest a narrative yet there's comments of like you miss this it's like we didn't miss anything yeah we're just not talking about that yep there's always parts of a story. So I got to be a part of some really cool stuff. The The biggest thing I got to be a part of was a 30 for 30. We traveled all over. We spent a ton of money on interviews. There's all these storylines that we, um, that we, you know, learned from people, their perspectives. Um, it was about the UFC. So of course there's conflicting opinions and there's all kinds of crazy stuff going on. And the two main characters ultimate, well, it's kind of ultimately it boiled down to three main characters, but in the beginning of that, it started out as one thing. And as we kind of went on, it was like, oh, it kind of turned into this other thing where we had two characters, but now there's three because of the perspectives that, that we've learned and the stories we've learned. So what happens in these like really long form things is that they, you gather so much information and you have to decide what's important to the story, like you just said, Joshua, the narrative that we're driving home in this particular yeah. thing. And so for, for JHS, for us in this particular episode, there was a very certain narrative that we were going hey this is applicable these things are applicable um yeah so that was that was a, a total yeah. choice yeah. i'll just read through some more of these it's just i just want to shine a light on and especially like our fan the people that watch lives i think you're like true fans so in a lot of ways help us communicate that's what i'm saying i think it's a team effort and especially our patrons who help like we travel and interviews hard drives full of stuff we're calling and working on it's to, it's we need your help to further push the fact that these narratives have to stay focused and really strong. Yep. So, you know, a comment like, OK, what about how the music which preceded black America, which by this racial lens nonsense would be white America? Like, that's not what we're talking about. So right. it's certainly a fact that rock is partially influenced by blues, but not totally all of music is equally borrowed. I never said any of that. I think that's what's also interesting is sometimes we see in the comments like 
don't hear what I didn't say. Mm-hmm. It was like I never got into that. I literally am talking about Highway 61. Right. And again, it's like, don't hear what we're not saying and understand that it's focused because that's that narrative. It's a chap. It's not even a chapter. The, actually, there is a chapter I'm working on about this. You could do a whole book. I've read 10 books on this, uh, books on this highway. So it's like so focused. Um, comments like, you guys really screwed this up. First, you, like everybody today, had to turn it into race. You claim it started with Turner, Elvis, and Dylan in 65. I never said that. That's you, nowhere in the video. You didn't say that. It ignores Chuck Berry from 55 because he's not involved in the Highway 61 narrative. It's just so interesting how people perceive what something... It's just not said. Any of, None of that's said. I think... I can see you really. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> crazy because when you're teaching history, it's so difficult to not have people put words in your mouth. The, I think the, another difficult thing that we're running into is just the cultural slash political climate that we're in at the moment right um because there was there was one comment that was like so woke good job and i couldn't it Mm. seemed sarcastic to me i don't know i think one important thing to understand is like at jhs we're trying to be aware of things but we're not necessarily trying to be woke in the sense that we're trying to like we're jumping on a political narrative and trying yeah. to ride that wave like we want to be educated ourselves and we also there's a, the simple fact of giving credit where credit is due yeah yeah like yep. we 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 make pedals really good pedals and treat people well that's been the agenda and then i want to teach history yep. and try to do it justice and let people tell their stories and help people tell stories there is no agenda so right it comes you know with the robert johnson thing some of the comments are amazing where it almost feels like like just to say that it almost feels like some people have a hard time just saying Robert Johnson went and learned to play guitar and became skilled. They would rather just say he met the devil. Yeah. That's like, just give him credit. I was spinning around on that one where it's like, it's easier <laughs> Yeah, at some level. It became easier to believe that this young black man sold his soul to the devil and learned and that's why he was amazing instead of the fact that yeah. he went away for like 24 just practiced. months and practiced yeah. and so that's that's really difficult again more chuck berry comments it's like yeah it's not the story it's not the narrative um and if you're watching this this is helpful for we're trying to and in the comments even dialogue with maybe how you perceive the episode it's also fun because that was never intended to be such a publicly seen episode i would have refilmed so many things in a heartbeat yeah we never showed much footage of clarksdale we didn't get to go to his grave we were in a rush it's such a beautiful story i really do recommend reading escaping the delta if you loved that narrative like this comment wayne says what is this i didn't make it past five minutes i expected chuck berry little richard muddy waters helen wolf Instead, I got Elvis, Barf, and Bob Dylan. This is so bad. You're not getting the point of the episode. No. Like you're not. You're not understanding that it's a mic. It's a very small story, exactly told, and we're not trying to cover rock and roll history. Uh, one of the first times I ever. There's just so many more comments that also are like, "What about this? What about this?" Well, yeah, I know about that, but it's not part of the story. One of the first episodes I ever saw this on was History of Distortion, hmm. which are we at a million? It's almost a million views, maybe. I don't know, actually. Yeah, Kitty says this. So it's funny because immediately a bunch, a million views now, the comments are friends like, what about, what about this guy? It's like, okay, sure. Uh, there's some need in the YouTube world that people feel like they need to jump in and correct wrongness when there actually isn't it's not part of the story social media world yeah it's kind of a social our media day world. and age this yeah. is definitely a hot topic it is i don't want to bring this down but i yeah. think it's interesting to talk about yep. and i'm interested to come back after this live i would love for you to chime in so i can i just i think the wednesday crowd is an important crowd and i wanted to bring this up to see what you think about it so in the comments let me know 
if you don't like any of it, let me know. Tell me if you hate me. Tell me if it's not even about me. Tell me what you thought about that narrative and like going forward. How was that communicated to you? Did you understand it? Um, we're not here to make seven hour documentaries for a Friday. That's a quick narrative. Take it for what it is. And that's the hot topic today. Hot Who won those strings? <laughs> Who did win strings? Bringing it back around. Let's bring it around with the squawk of the eagle. What JHS and Ernie Ball artists produced Green Day's 2020 record, Father of All? The I answer. Do, do you actually know this time? I also know. It is. Go Butch ahead. Walker. Butch Walker, yes. Um, and Alex Bartol. Bartol or Barthol? I'm not sure which, uh, how to say you. that. But you win. So please email us at vlog at jhspedals.com. Let's close off with like a final jam. I also, in the comments, I would love to know what you think about this show. So if you thought about a Wednesday new and notable show, do you like this? Do you like the way of going through? So if we look at the top down, I want to find a good way to communicate new stuff that's being overlooked by the big channels and people who are more interested in pedals for other reasons. I really, really like just showing a pedal. Like I love that I can show this, which is $79, or I can show this amazing pedal by Brady, a friend, or I can show this new, like $400. And I, I think it's just, I want to share, um, from the perspective of like, these are cool. I don't care what they cost. I'm not in it for any other reason than showing them. So I like this format, like a new and notable thing. I think I want to start doing it more. So I'm open to corrective criticism on better ways to demonstrate these, um, in the future. I think we, we crash out on a big jam here. Uh, there's some other stuff I wanted to show. This was fun. This came with a letter. Sometimes we, we have a bin out there of just like fan mail and like craft made stuff. I just have one. Yeah, yeah, read it. One, why didn't you cover this uh, comment? Sure, you talk about pedals, but what about the migration patterns of humpback whales, Josh? This person gets it. I like that humor. This is from Gear Ant. So apparently people have those pedal board tins, you know, like a, what are they? The little, oh yeah, they're Altoid mint, Altoids. Altoids, yep. So he took a case and he magnetized and so it's padded inside. Dang. So it's pretty cool. That's awesome. Check it. I love that. Way better than an Altoid tin. So go to at gear underscore ant, G-E-A-R underscore A-N-T on instagram maybe he'll make you one of these i thought it was really cool it's been setting in a bin of fan stuff for a while we also have this is an etsy shop these were sent in from a fan i believe from matt at the knobbery like knobs knobbery he made a bunch of like like eyeball knobs do the top down on this I don't know if you can see like that's fine. these are really well made. There's some JHS stuff. So I'm assuming he can do he probably could do knobs with like your face on them or like something oh, whatever you want. I don't, don't know. Tempt me. It kind of looks like yeah. Wait, we should get knobs with your face on them and sell them. We should Oh, look at that. That's slick. Hey. We these should, are for your your guitar or pedal, right? Yeah. Yep. Or gets I think it's any it looks like the pot shaft, yeah, like a typical shaft. Yeah, the knobbery. So if you go to etsy.com slash shop, there's a glare. There we go. Etsy.com slash shop. You got this. Hold on. You got this. Hold on. It's www.etsy.com slash. Oh, no. Slash. Slash. www.etsy.com slash shop. Slash the knobbery one. <laughs> Check out the knobbery. This has been really fun. It's been I great. I enjoyed it. You know, 
I didn't want to rant. I wanted to discuss that. Yep. We talked earlier, like, I never want to, like, rant because mm-hmm. I'm fine. Yep. I like what I do. I'm proud of what we put out. I just wanted some feedback. Yep. That's all. What should we jam on? You call it. You guys call it. Oh, I really love the lollygagger. <laughs> yeah. Let's get get crazy with the lollygagger. You like the cherry box one? Yeah. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. <laughs> 